Hey all, and welcome back to another most underrated team. Last time, I created one for Fire Red and Leaf Green, and you guys seem to appreciate it. Today though, we find ourselves in one of the best remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now, when it came to finding a team, it was kinda hard, not gonna lie. Some Pokemon just aren't available until way later, so I did the best I could without using trade evolutions or the usual guidelines I follow with this series. The underrated team is just essentially what I consider to be the second best option under the best team. Also, there are a few version exclusive mons I use here, but that's only because there is one version exclusive choice for each respective game. I'm sure you guys have an idea of what I mean. An example of this is Scyther in Fire Red and Pinsir for Leaf Green. Anywho though, I think you guys get it. Oh, and Mystic Reads and Shorts, the usual shoutouts. But with that though, let's begin. So to begin, we're gonna be ditching our starter this go around. Meganium I don't think is underrated per se, as grass types in Johto are usually a no-go for me. And Typhlosion and Feraligatr are beasts in their own right. I've decided our starter will essentially be our flyer. Now, to get this, you're gonna have to start your journey at night, because we're going with Noctowl. Noctowl doesn't get enough praise, and I deem it not bad for the situation we're in, because it does actually get access to a special flying type attack, and it also gets some psychic type options as well. Hoodoo can be found immediately when you start your playthrough, so there's no worries there. If you want to go with Pidgeot, however, I don't see any wrong in that either. I'd just like Noctowl more. But the choice is up to you though. Noctowl's moveset is gonna consist of Fly, Air Slash, Extrasensory, and Hyper Beam. See, this is actually a pretty good moveset. We can actually take advantage of that special attacking stat. Fly can be obtained from Chuck's wife after defeating Chuck. Air Slash can be learned via level up at 32. Extrasensory can be learned at level 42, and Hyper Beam can be picked up from the Goldenrod department store. Uproar is another special attacking normal type attack, and that can be learned at level 13. I just like Hyper Beam more because that sudden burst of power could come in clutch at some point. Now, before I wrap up Noctowl, it was actually a member on the worst team for Platinum. But in Heart Gold and Soul Silver's case, with the limited flyers we have, it's second best compared to Firo, but not quite as crappy as Farfetch'd. So roll with it. We also need a flyer because HM still exists here. Up next is actually a trade evolution, but not quite. Graveler. Geodude can be found at the beginning of the game, right on Route 46. The early game accessibility also helped its case a lot. However, what if I were to tell you we're actually going to be ditching Graveler for a better ground type? That's right, Geodude is only for the first couple gyms realistically. So we're going to pick up Nidoran Female on Route 35, evolve it in the Need Arena, and then you can grab a Moonstone from the Ruins of Alf by solving one of the tile puzzles. You will need Surf to get it. You could also get one from the Pokeathlon Dome. But yeah, Nidoqueen makes its return from the most underrated Fire Red and Leaf Green team. And for good measure too. Nidoqueen gets access to a pretty good move pull, and the fact it gets access to two very good stab options is pretty amazing. Stats wise, it's also pretty good. I don't need to praise this queen though, because I think you guys have an idea. Let's hop into her moveset. Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, Fire Blast, and Blizzard. Sludge Bomb is great because you can get it from an NPC right above Mahogany Town going in the Lake of Rage. This move is pretty powerful, especially for a poison type. And Nido Queen can finally take advantage of Poison Stab after it wasn't able to for Fire Red and Leaf Green. What's dope about Earth Power is that Nido Queen learns it at level 43. Game Freak actually did this one right, so good job. That also means the Earthquake TM can go to another team member. Cool. Fire Blast and Blizzard can both be bought in the Goldenrod department store. Now, it is possible to get Flamethrower and Ice Beam. However, I'm sure you all know how annoying the grind is for Heart Gold and Soul Silver's game corner, as they're 10,000 coins each. So when I say Thunder, Fire Blast, or Blizzard, that also means Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam if you want to go the extra mile and grind coins, but good luck with that. Up third is our actual first not fully evolved Pokemon, being Machoke. I really wanted to use one of the Hitmons, but Waterfall was needed, and that's pretty late game to get Tyrogue from Mount Mortar. You can get a Machop by training an NPC in the Goldenrod department store for a Drowsy. Machoke is still not bad though for a non fully evolved Pokemon, and I've actually mentioned it in my top 10 Kanto Pokemon I've never used before video I did a little while back. 
As far as the speed department goes, Machoke is only 10 base points slower than Machamp's base 55 speed, so there isn't an astronomical difference in their stats aside from the 130 base physical attack Machamp sports. Machoke is Whitney's bane though, and will be taking Heracross's usual spot. Base 100 attack alongside some good fighting stab still helps its case as a pretty underrated fighting type, but with that, let's hop into its moveset. The moves Machoke is going to be using consist of Vital Throw, Return, Strength, and Earthquake. Vital Throw can be learned at level 25, and with 70 base power and not being able to miss, it's a pretty solid deal. Cross Chop does have more power, but I like the accuracy Vital Throw has, and Cross Chop also has limited power points. Rock Tomb is another option if you want another piece of coverage, and the TM for that can be gotten from inside of Union Cave. Geodude won't need it trust. Return can be obtained from an NPC in the Goldenrod department store once one of your Pokemon reaches a high level of happiness. Strength can be found in Mount Mortar upon entering it. Now we have our psychic type Pokemon of choice. Now I could have gone for Kadabra again and that would have been a pretty good choice, but we're going to use something that I deem is pretty underrated and sometimes people often tend to forget about it. It's Drafferig. Drafrig is actually the perfect counter for Morty because of that normal psychic typing. Stats wise, it's also pretty good, alongside having a solid psychic attack to go up against Morty straight from the get go. Drafrig can be caught near the Lake of Rage. You can actually go through Mount Mortar to get there before facing Morty. Drafrig tends to get overshadowed by Espeon, Alakazam, or Starmie for a Johto run, so I'm glad I could bring it to this team. Let's get into its moveset. Psychic, Shadow Ball, Thunder, and Charge Beam are the moves Giraffe Rig is going to be using today. Psychic is pretty cool because it can be learned at level 37. In the meantime, use Psy Beam learned at level 19. Next up is Thunder, which I've discussed earlier at the Goldenrod department store. And Charge Beam is located behind the lighthouse in Olivine via surfing. Think of it as a second rate Calm Mind with only a chance of a special attack increase. Calm Mind can't be obtained until the Battle Frontier. So yeah. Kind of sucks. At the penultimate spot, we have our version exclusive fire types being Ninetales and Arcanine. Now, some of you may be asking, why not Magmar? Well, I used Magmar on a best team, so that's why. Now, Vulpix and Growlithe can be caught in the same place on Route 36. Vulpix and Soul Silver, and Growlithe and Heart Gold. Both are solid fire types when fully evolved, and the moot pulls are pretty dope too. Now, of course, they are Stone Evolution Pokemon. However, don't let that fact intimidate you. The Firestones are actually not that hard to get here. They can be found on Tuesdays at the Pokeathlon Dome for 2,500 points, or by being given one by School Kid Allen on Route 36, who will sometimes give you one if you have his number registered in your Pokegear. Now, I wouldn't evolve Vulpix in the Ninetales until it reaches level 24, where it gets Flamethrower. Growlithe is a tad different, but not by much. I'd wait till level 34 to evolve Growlithe, because then it gets Flamethrower as well. But if you're fine with getting the TM for it, or by keeping Flame Wheel or Fire Fang, that's fine too. With that though, when it comes to movesets, I'll be doing one at a time and having two separate ones. So let's get into those. Let's start with Ninetales. Flamethrower, Will-O-Wisp, Hidden Power, and Dark Pulse. Flamethrower, I've already discussed. Will-O-Wisp can be learned at level 14, and it could help in a pinch if you're trying to capture a Pokemon or need to cripple a physical attacker with burn. Hidden Power is a mystery move, so you never know what you'll get. The TM for that can be found at the Lake of Rage. Lastly is Dark Pulse, which can be found in the Victory Road as a TM. Now for Arcanine. Flamethrower, Bite, Iron Tail, and the last slot is up to you. Flamethrower, like I said, can be learned at level 34. Bite is learned as a Growlithe, and Iron Tail can be earned from defeating Jasmine as a TM. And last but not least, we have our Surfer and Water type. Now, Heart Gold and Soul Silver actually doesn't have a bad selection of water types in the least bit, but I decided on going for something that wasn't quite the water type ice combo, nor did I want to use something like Tentacruel. I decided on going with Lantern because of its electric typing. Lantern is actually pretty freaking good, because with that electric type, you have something for those annoying water Pokemon, which will be pretty useful for your journey. Chinchou can be caught with a good rod in New Bark Town, and it evolves fairly quick at level 27. I was actually debating between Lantern and Cloyster, but I decided on Lantern primarily because it wasn't another stone evolution. That HP stat also looked fun. Anywho though, let's look at the moveset. 
Surprisingly, we got a decent one, with Surf and Thunder for stab, followed by Signal Beam and Blizzard for coverage. Surf is our main attacking move, and can be obtained after defeating the Team Rocket member at the Ecritique Dance Theater. Thunder and Blizzard can be found in their usual spots, and Signal Beam can be learned at level 35. I think Lantern was a pretty fun choice, and I hope you guys can appreciate it as much as I can. Well, that's what I consider to be the most underrated team for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This team definitely could have gone another angle, because there are other solid mons to use for the typings I chose. What do you guys think though? Do you like the team, or would you have changed some mons up? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my content. With Scarlet and Violet DLC on the way, we have a lot to be excited for. Not just that though, but I've got a bunch of other cool series planned throughout the year that I'm sure you guys will love. If you want to support my other forms of content, over on Mystic Reads, I read fanfics. One of them right now is Road to be a Pokemon Master Kanto Edition, where Ash and Serena start from the very beginning and journey through Kanto together. On Mystic Umbreon Shorts, I do other exclusive Pokemon content such as Pokemon Facts, and on Saturdays, I upload my top 5 favorite Pokemon of a type. Anyway, Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent day.